Hello. Hope we're all well. Let's get down to business. It's the films of Quentin Tarantino. I love him. Well, you gotta have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped? Oh, the fuck's happening? Oh, oh man. Shit. Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. Why the fuck did you do that? Well, I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. Let's go. Okay, we've got his lovely titles at the bottom there. Um, what I first want to say is, undoubtedly, my favourite filmmaker. Might not be a looker, but he's got it up here. QT, my boy. We're going to start off with his first film, Reservoir Dogs. Woof. Woof. What can I say about this one? Burst onto the scene, of course. Um, stuck in the middle with you, ear scene. Uh, Google it. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Classic stuff. Eh. Do you know what? What am I doing? It's top. It's top tier. There's not much wrong with it as a film. A heist film without seeing the heist. Unique. Wow. Is all I can say about Pulp Fiction, really. Uh, my top three films. Pulp Fiction. In fact, probably top... It's top two? Can you believe that? I know. So it's an S, of course. Great design on the poster as well. I love the design of the poster. I love the design. That poster I have on my wall in my bedroom. And I won't tell you what's stuck all over it. Ooh, that's a bingo. Uma Thurman. I love Uma, and I love her legs in that photograph. Brilliant. Okay, moving on. Jackie Brown. Great cast. Like, you had Robert De Niro in there. I think it's a little bit sus. They haven't worked together since me. I think there's a bit of a do, or they didn't agree with how they worked with each other or something. It just seems strange to me that he hadn't been in anything else since back in the day in this one. However, great performance from everyone. It's based on a book, this one. I'm sure it's it's probably the best adaptation of that story. I haven't seen any other Jackie Brown adaptations, but as a Tarantino film, stylistically it's there for him. I just think it's probably a C. If I were talking about any other filmmaker, though, a C, a, a Tarantino C is most filmmakers um, best film. So when I say C, I mean Tarantino C. He's not a regular man, and nor should he be treated like one. Kill Bill. I've done volume one and two as one. Um, fucking brilliant, man. It's my Uma again. I love me some Thurman. Why do you feel it's necessary to yak about bullshit in order to be comfortable? Eh, got to be eh. Just because, you know, obviously we're talking these are top five of my favourites. And Kill Bill, I mean, I must have watched it 20 times. And I love it. So again, it's a Tarantino eh. Very, very good. Very strong. Death Proof. I don't know if many have seen this. It seems to be the one that slips under the radar for a lot of people. And it's great. I know he said he's not really that fond of it. Well, he, he agrees it's his worst film. I don't think it's a bad film at all. I don't. I think he's right. It's probably not on Kill Bill's level. Um, B. Give it a watch because it's definitely worth it. Kurt Russell's an absolute fucking badass in it. He's a stunt man and he kills women. You silver tongue devil, you. It's very Tarantino. -y. It's just not there story-wise like a Pulp Fiction or a Kill Bill or a Reservoir, for that matter. So just based on that, it's a B. Other than that, fantastic piece of work. A Tarantino B. Yeah? Django Unchained. What to say about this? Fuck me. What can you say? It's there. Surprised, are you? So you've got Christoph Waltz, brilliant character. DiCaprio coming in with a brilliant, brilliant character. Well, gentlemen, you have my curiosity. Now you have my attention. What a good time. 
exactly what you want out of a Tarantino experience, I think. So it's S. Okay, this is an honourable mention. He didn't direct this, but he wrote it. And I know he's written a couple of others that he hasn't directed, True Romance and something else. Um, but from Dust Till Dawn, I wanted to give it an honourable mention because he starred and wrote in it. And I think it's probably an A. It's the weirdest fucking film ever. Wonderfully weird. I think that's the expression. George Clooney plays Tarantino's brother. Tarantino plays, um, I think he's quite sexually aggressive. He's got. He's like a rapist. I think that's implied. And he kills a woman in the beginning in a hotel room. I'm a bit foggy on it because that much crazy shite happens in it. But honestly, if you haven't seen that, go give that a watch. It's an old one, but a good one. You will not know what is coming. I promise you that. Hateful Eight. It's great. Um, It's great. No, it's good. I'm going to put it... It's a C, but a Tarantino C. All right? It's B. It's B. A little bit similar to, like, Reservoir Dogs. In a sense that there's obviously a lot of goings on that ha- that's happening outside of what you're seeing, and a little uh, a little Channing Tatum cameo. I never thought I'd get that collab. Okay, Inglorious Bastards. Christoph Waltz's debut with Tarantino. Wow. Wow. Brad Pitt's debut with Tarantino as well, and Maron S all the way. You can take that to a bank. There's Jewish people hiding under the floorboards. And, um... God. Once upon a time in Hollywood. You're not going to like it. It's a no from me. I feel like it was made for people who grew up in LA, like Tarantino. So I would imagine it's a complete love letter to where he was from and that. But I didn't come from there, Quentin. I, I, I didn't come from there. So you rebuilding your neighbourhood from the 60s didn't do a right lot for me. Feels like there's been a timeline fleshed out long term. And we've got to see an odd part, you know, a brief. If we'd have gone from, I don't know, I don't know. I can't tell him how to write a fucking film, can I? Um, (laughs) Imagine. It's going to go deep, but again, a Quentin Tarantino deep. There's a lot of films I'd put it above. Like, I just went to see... um, Avatar 2. Bad example. I wouldn't put that above, actually. (laughs) Are you going to bark all day, little doggy? He got really angry about people saying that, oh, well, Margot Robbie's barely in it. Well, let's be honest, Quentin. Screen time-wise, she is barely in it and doesn't really hold much point. You know, he told her she was the heartbeat of the piece. Well, I'd get my heart checked if it beated that little. Great, great films. I'm saying, I'm saying this, and I mean it. Every film on this list is worth watching, without a doubt. If you can sit through and have a Quentin Tarantino day, my God, you would love every single one of them. And I'm not. That's that's the point I want to make. I like every single one of these films. It can do no wrong in my eyes, to be honest with you. Once upon a time in Hollywood, fucking hell, I saw it twice. So it's on D, but a Tarantino D, which is what I want in my fucking rear. Um, So yeah, I think we've done well. And unfortunately, the sad news is, after all that, he's only making one more, apparently. Said he's got ten in him. Ten films in him, and he doesn't want to see it decline. Well, I don't know whether Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was the start of... I don't think it's declining. I think it's different tastes over time to be honest. I think filmmakers give less of a fuck about what they think people want to see and do what they want when they get older. He don't want to be washed up, and I get that, but Scorsese, still churning them out. Spielberg, unstoppable. Have a think about it, Quentin. Don't be so hasty. I would love to see Kill Bill Volume 3 as the final Tarantino movie. He's never done a sequel. He's done Vol- Kill Bill 1 and 2. I, I know what you're saying. It's one story. in it? And it was mi- built for two films. 
anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, my favourite filmmaker. Uh, so enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please subscribe if you enjoy the content. That would mean a lot of money for me. No, I'm only joking. I don't get paid a dime. You bastard.